I, we're live on Twitch. Hi, I'm Pete, and we're about to start our uh, third adventure of the evening, which I am calling The Southern Border. Uh, before we get into it, though, as always, we are going to introduce our adventures. Uh, we have returning a, a fabled tier crew, uh, heroes that you all likely know and love by now, but uh, we will still go through and introduce them nonetheless. So, uh, first off, we have... Uh, coming back, I, I believe also after an adventure last week, we have uh, the Silver Tongue, the Silver Tongued uh, Ideal. Welcome, Ideal. Hello, it is good to be back. Uh, and for the record, if anyone doesn't, I forgot to ask if everyone had their character sheets, but if you don't, let me know. Um, it's good to uh, it's good to have you back, Ideal. How are you doing? Um, you came out, I think, better than most people after last week's adventure, which was a pretty harrying one. Yes, I... I was quite lucky. I was prepared to defend myself if need be, but apparently the enemy chose to ignore me for the most part. Yes. Uh, well, you had that. Uh, you had that fly spell keeping you up in the air out of their uh, out of their range to a degree. Uh, either way, uh, I'm glad that you survived. Of course, you would always be resurrected, but um, your survival it still it warms my heart, so to speak. Um, so, ideal. Any anything new in your life? Anything exciting to share? Well, I've been uh, trying out the ring I recently got from Bartholomew, so it's quite an, it's quite interesting. Um, oh, really? What? Uh, tell me about the nature of the ring. Well, it apparently summons... Oh, you yes. Channel, now uh, I remember what you have. Yeah, you channel a spell through it, and it summons an elemental based on the spell. Uh, so are, are you, uh, do you have some big plans for that one tonight? I, I do. I have a few plans for it. I look, I look forward to seeing whatever it is that you create. Uh, very good. Welcome, Ideal. Uh, coming up next, we have Sugar Mama, the sweet. Welcome, Sugar Mama. Oh, thank you, dearie. Um, now, Sugar Mama, have you been out in the, uh, the adventuring field, so to speak, since, uh, your last pretty terrible run-in with the uh, with the hollow walk. Oh, I'm afraid not. You see, my boys, it's 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 you know, it's the the it's the candy corn flu season, and well, they weren't feeling well. Um, yeah, the candy corn flu can be pretty nasty, especially uh, far up north. Um, is that the one where the little like candy corns start to kind of grow on your body? Oh, yes, it's quite dreadful. There was an epidemic, and I, and I had to take care of my boys and the entire tribe. Um, well, I hope that they all ended up being okay. Is, is everyone better now? Is that why you're back here uh, adventuring? Oh, yes, I needed a little break from all of the commotion. You know, Mama's got to take a little time for herself, too. Um. Well, uh, well, Mama, it's good to have you. Uh, it's good to have you here. Uh, I don't know if it will necessarily be a relaxing break, but a break nonetheless. Um, good to have you back. Uh, coming up next, we have Nigel Estrada returning once more, the Dread Emperor. Uh, Nigel, how are you? I am doing quite well this evening, Pete. Um, so, Nigel, have you um, have you kind of made any territorial gains since you're uh, kind of joining the? Uh, since kind of joining Bartholomew's adventuring troop and uh, becoming an adventure here in D and D time, um, do you, tell me about your kingdom that you are the emperor of, or is the is that more aspirational? Think of it more along the lines of a divination. It will mm. come to pass soon. I've been building up some more material gains to secure more, shall we say, morally ambiguous army. Although in recent time, I've had to put something of a hiatus to that effect. Oh, and why is that? I've encountered something truly magnificent in my last few outings with Bartholomew. Oh, so uh, yes. I can oh. very well be the Dread Emperor if I don't have the strongest force at my back. And perhaps in your recent worship of this strange... Uh, semi-ambiguous power that you've been kind of chasing after, um, you may find some salvation or new strength in the future. I hope to see it. <laughs> Let's hope for the latter. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, seems fitting, yes. Uh, well, Nigel, welcome back. And uh, I would be remiss if, last but not least, I did not introduce our our resident author. We have Chogal Hammerfist of the Smooth Soothing Voice. Welcome, Chogal. Hey, guys. Hi, DM Pete. Um, hello. It's good to uh, it's good to see you. Um, so, Chogal. Now. Tell me, what have you been working on lately? Is there anything new that you kind of, do you have any like kind of secrets you can tell us about what the next book in your series is going to be? Well, here's the thing though. I actually just released my third book. You already released, you know, Chogal, at this rate, you're going to be prolific very soon as this is your third novel in uh, as, as many, maybe like two months. I was going to say in as many weeks, but uh, pretty close. Uh, Chogal, what's the, your new book? Tell me about it. Uh, well, it's called A Tale of Tongues. It is actually something that I had to learn recently, that you can't always solve things with violence. Sometimes you have to speak the right way, and other times you might just have to demand them to retreat, and, you know, otherwise they die. Um, now, Chogal, I I'm getting the impression that not only is this book going to be very popular, but... Uh, it seems like your writing quality has markedly improved. Like, you're at least at bare minimum, if you're not becoming a better writer, I can tell that you're becoming better at coming up with titles. Well, I mean, you gotta learn tricks of the trade to keep going in this market. <laughs> Some very good alliteration in that one. Uh, and I know, I hope you have the sales to show for it. I know Bartholomew uh, probably already has a copy. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, uh, speak of the devil, actually. Um, you all stand in Bartholomew's shop. Uh, and Bartholomew greets you. Ah, welcome! Oh, Trugal, I just picked up a copy of your new book, A Tale of Tongues. It's a very, um, it's a very good read. Um, could you sign the inside cover for me, if you did not mind? Well, actually, I have a very special gift for you. You can probably give that other book to someone else, because I have this here. He, put, he brings up the original first copy. We already signed and hand this to Bartholomew. This is an incredible honor, Chokal. Thank you very much. Um, I will certainly treasure this. Uh, and he puts this, um, you see him kind of walk over to that like side bureau he has in his room with like player gifts and like things that players have created or adventurers, I'm sorry, have created. And he opens it up. Uh, and he kind of like pushes some stuff aside and makes like a special little like plaque for it. He prestigiations out uh, and drops it on and he takes the other book and, and tosses it in the bag of mementos. Um, and he says, thank you very much, Chokal. Um, But that is uh, actually not why I called you here. I'm here because I have a, a fairly dire situation uh, on our hands here today. Um, you are four of um, the more powerful adventurers here. Uh, among my adventuring stables. Some of our most powerfuls are uh, out engaged with other things at the moment, but this will be a, uh, a difficult challenge. You see um, a dragon, an old one, um, has uh, traveled to the slumbering spine. Are you all familiar with the domain? <laughs> yes, oh, I'm it, but I haven't been there. <laughs> I, don't, um, I don't recall. I do believe I've heard whispers. It is a mountain. It is in the far south of the uh, continent. And um, it received its name because the mountain uh, moves slowly up and down as if, uh, as if the, the breath. It is a strange technotic effect. Um, it makes a good when there are many crossings into the plain of dreams in this region. Uh, however, um, um, apparently deep within the mountain, perhaps uh, the source of this magic that causes it to move. Um, legend tells of an artifact called the Mountain's Heart. Um, it is something that needs to be remained untampered with, but um, a dragon has learned about this thing and is going to take it for, um, well, uh, their self. Um, him and their minions have found an ancient cave within the slumbering spire. Um, I already have had Roderick set up a teleportation uh, pad over near there. Um, it did take some time, but I'm going to get you straight there. Do you have any other questions? I need you to, uh, to stop the dragon and make sure that uh, the heart remains 
uh, untouched. Will do, Bart. Um, I-, I have to say this, though. Why are dragons so greedy? Well, that's because they can't help but eat all the candy. Or at least that's how candy dragons are. Choco, do you mean to tell me if you were not as mighty as a dragon, you would not take what you desired? Well, that's stingy. I'm not a greedy person. Um, I'm... I would not judge a dragon for being a bit greedy from time to time. It's a natural instinct. <laughs> Pete says because this is something he does on a daily basis. <laughs> well, are you ready to go? <laughs> yes, of course. Remind me to make you some cookies next time, Bartholomew. I just I forgot all of my delicious sugar cookies back home. I will do that. Um, thank you very much for the offer, uh, Sugar Mama. You are indeed the sweet. Um, well, uh, without further ado, I suppose I will send you off. And he snaps his fingers, and with a sudden rush, you all find yourselves uh, standing on kind of a stone circle. Um, you can see the kind of small gnomish footprints trailing away from it, where um, Roger must have walked up and kind of set this up, and then. Um, kind of went back, and then in front of you looms a great cave. You are standing high above you. You can see the various kind of peaks of the slumbering spine looming very tall. Uh, You are in like a pretty sharp valley uh, that kind of falls in between a lot of like some of like the taller and like sharper of the spines that kind of reach upwards. Uh, And kind of at the base of it, like I said, you can see this kind of cave um, that is carved into it, this presumably being where the entrance to the mountain's heart that this kind of greedy dragon found. All right, boys, lead the way. Sugar Mama's got to take it slow. Um, of course, yeah. Sugar yeah. will start leading the way. <laughs> All right. Um, what are your um, kind of passive perceptions? Nine. <laughs> Ten. Mama has a 15. 15, Mama. Ooh. Uh, ideal. What do you got? 11. 11. Uh, Mama, um, you're kind of getting closer to the cave. You start kind of working your way across the, uh, you know, the cracked stone. Um, the tr- terrain here is very, um, it- it's very treacherous. Um, this valley, like the different angles of the mountains kind of meeting in this pit all kind of turn and, um, kind of create a landscape where you're never, your feet are never able to get like flat footing. Um, as you all kind of walk through this, this bit of terrain, um, Mama, you get closer to the cave um, and you notice a little bit of um, shifting. There, there's kind of like a, a, a bit of a rock that's kind of jutting out um, from above the cave entrance. Um, and you can see what appears to be um, just a movement, almost one of the rocks that's kind of resting on it above it looks like it jiggles a little bit unnaturally. Ooh, wait a moment, boys. Ah, what? Oh, stop. Yeah. Oh, this humongous hands in front of everyone so they can't go to board. Yeah, off, you, you spread your arms out. And... She's just gonna pop it with her hands. Okay. Uh, go ahead and, oh, you already rolled it. Uh, roll damage. <laughs> you definitely hit. Boop. Pop rock. Uh, you... Uh, you fire out just that's almost the perfect amount of damage for that to do. Uh, you fire out your uh, bolt of cold up, and as it impacts, you see it kind of pushes back what looks like a cloth that's kind of colored to look like gray stone. Uh, and you hear underneath it, uh, and um, falling down from the top as you hit them is a a small kind of scraggly looking creature who catches himself. Uh, kind of pulls out a dagger quickly, looks along, he has a long dragonoid snout. Uh, you're looking at what looks to be um, just a kobold um, who looks out at you, um, kind of scared, uh, holds up his dagger and moves to start like turning and running into the cave. Oh, oh, you're gonna right pick him up by the scuff of his neck. <laughs> uh, so you're gonna run up to him and try and, uh, and try and grapple him? All right, go ahead and make yes. an athletics check. Oh. oh, dear little one, there's no cause for worry. Yet. He gets a two. I rolled a two. Uh, oh, the cobalt gets a two? Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, you just kind of, um, I don't even know if there's any words spoken, uh, but there's just kind of another small ray of frost that just hits the ground right in front of the kobold, where the kobold was going to like step, uh, and he slips and falls, and uh, with ease, Chogal is able to pick him up as you use your portent uh, to predict the future. Uh, and um, <clears throat> the kobold's now kind of struggling in your grasp, and you just hear him kind of muttering at you, uh, in Draconic, just, yeah, you see the come here, That's a I don't speak that language. I do <laughs> speak that language. I do as um, well. Don't be rude. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, and what the two of you heard was, Put me down, you bumbling fool! My master will destroy you! Idiot! What'd he say? What'd he say? He called you a bumbling <laughs> fool, dearie. I'm gonna like... Slam him against the wall, but not so much that it'll hurt. It's mostly my fist hitting the wall, but just to show power. Okay, uh, you do that. It's pretty trivial. Yeah, you you slam him up against the wall, uh, and he just goes, ah! ah, man, handling me. Stop it. Let me see this in words you understand. Take me to your leader. He says to take you to your master. Uh, he kind of speaks to you now in common, and he, he's kind of slowly starting to calm down and realize that he's pretty boned. Uh, and he looks up at you like this towering figure, Chogal, and just goes, Yeah? You want me to take you to my master? Well, m my master will be taking it to you soon, as he will the entire world when he obtains the mountain's heart. <laughs> no, that would be bad, dearie. I want to try to intimidate him. Same. Uh, what are you guys, uh, what are you guys saying? I'm also, I'm just glaring at him very, right, very yeah. angrily. Uh, what do you say, Ideal? Uh, you have advantage on your intimidation check because Chogal is helping you. <laughs> okay. I just, uh, I'm gonna, uh, oh, I'm gonna blast, uh, the wall with, you know, one of my spells. <laughs> you know, trying to, show them, like, how strong we are. Okay. Um, yeah, you kind of just take an Eldritch Blast and just point it, like, right next to his head, and it just... <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and just <laughs> crushes into the wall right behind him, and he kind of, like, stiffens up, and he goes, All right, now, listen. We don't have to do anything too hasty. Now, my master's going to be taking over the world very soon. And I could see to it that you are among the last eliminated and destroyed. I could probably put in a good word for you. I'll be rewarded as a faithful servant, and then I can give some of that reward to you. Here's what Why you should do. we just take do. us to him? Um, right. I, I mean, he's uh, just in the cave. He's up ahead, but y you'll be too late. I'm gonna, throw, I'm gonna throw him to the side and start going off towards the game. Whoa! Nigel is going to go over and pick it up and kind of oh, dust him off. Your master sounds quite interesting. Glorious, even. Do tell me a bit about him. Uh, uh, so you guys gonna start walking in the cave as he tells you stuff? Well, Togal is. <laughs> okay. will just hang back a little bit for now. Okay, um, so you hang back. My master is old and powerful. He's a dragon. Um, uh, and a red one. A big one. He says he's been alive for hundreds of years. Well, just hundreds. Uh, Quite hundreds. Quite What does he call himself? <sighs> He calls himself Magmaroth. The Magmaroth? My, you should have said that sooner. How many of your kind are in service to the great Magmaroth? Um, I don't think he would want me to tell you that. You would be on. simply praising him with the might and strength he has set up here in this mountain. Um, that's you a are. good way. You can tell he knows that that doesn't make sense, but he's just looking for an excuse to tell you. He just goes, um, followers, 
He has one powerful general. And uh, many of us, uh, we went in with seven of our brothers. Others are posted around the mountainside at higher points, watching for anyone coming from a distance. I don't know how they didn't see you already approach. I was just guarding the cave, but let them know up ahead. Uh. What's this general of yours like, dearie? He's... He's Magmaroth's son. He was born of him. Part human, part dragon. We call him Vilthrath the Defiler. Oh, little Vili. You know him already? <laughs> oh, no, no. This is just... <laughs> This is just seems like an appropriate name for a little one. I don't think he would like that. It's fine. He doesn't have to like it. He's a naughty boy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Can I go? Yes. Don't follow us, dear. I'm going to run away. We'll kill you if you do. But yes, don't tell your friends about this wait, either. Wait, which way do I... What do I do? I can't leave or follow you? <laughs> Just don't can tell I... your friends. You can leave. Just don't tell your friends. Don't hide in that rock again. <laughs> I have no options. And he just, as you walk away, he's just there, like, in place, walking in circles, <laughs> unsure about how he should proceed in this uh, very dangerous moment. Uh, now just confused uh, and thoroughly intimidated and disheveled. Uh, as you proceed um, kind of deeper into the cave, um, as you continue, um, you can kind of, um, uh, you're kind of moving along. Uh, eventually, there appears to be a little bit of a, um, kind of a natural waterfall that you, uh, come across inside the cave as it opens up into a, a larger chasm, uh, and it kind of, like, branches off in, in several different paths, um, but kind of looking around and, and following the signs, you can, you can see signs of movement and kind of follow the direction in which, you know, the group on the whole went, um, as you kind of continue your way uh, deeper and deeper into the cave. Uh, and that kind of stream that was kind of rolling along the bottom of this cave uh, moves along behind you. And it also kind of branches out in strange ways uh, and moves through different kind of like openings and, and cavern caverns of different sizes. Uh, as there's just like this really elaborate inter interconnected series of tunnels that seems to run through uh, beneath the mountain here. Um, you travel for some time. Um, it is actually, um, it, it is actually like a solid hour that you're kind of following these paths and, and working your way through this cave um, before you eventually kind of um, reach, uh, reach a point and um, you're kind of tucked behind a rock, well, excuse me, um, you're kind of tucked behind a rock where up in the distance you are able to see, um, uh, you are able to see kind of a group of uh, a group of individuals that match the kind of party description that um, that Cobalt told you about before, um, kind of standing, guarding the uh, guarding the opening to what appears to be another large cavern. And within that cavern, you can just see a pulsing kind of red light. <sighs> uh, and from behind that cavern, you can also hear um, you hear like an absolutely terrifying just. <sighs> and a huge bout of flame just uh, flies. And then you hear two kind of uh, kind of crushing and smashing sounds as it appears that there's already um, some kind of battle going on in the cave above. Um, and you guys, um, the sound of your approach is pretty heavily masked by the kind of turbulence of this combat. Um, so if you want to stealth up, you can have... Uh, you can have advantage on your checks, or if you just want to go in guns blazing, you can also do that. I would have normal because I have disadvantage because it's team now. Ma Mama's gonna cast a, a spell. Let's see, this one will do. And it's going to go to sleep now. Just go to sleep. Um, you're gonna sleep the um sleep the kind of pack of kobolds up ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um. You watch you know, as stuff up. Um, th of the six kobolds, uh, all but one of them, um, all but one of them, just um, kind of all 
just fall down to the ground, and the one that's still left looks kind of um, lo looks kind of like wheezy, uh, and the defiler looks down. What are you imbeciles doing? Uh, and then looks over and sees the um, sees the two of you <laughs> approaching very loudly as you <laughs> slam across the ground. I'd like y'all to roll for initiative. Six in this, yep. <laughs> this is so cool. Um, we are so ready, <laughs> my boys. Um, uh, in the kind of time that it takes for you to close the gap, he does kind of like whack one of the kobolds, but the rest of them are still asleep. So, you get, uh, so one of them also hops back up. Uh, and... Um, oop, that's the wrong... Shit. <laughs> Damn it. Every time. Oh, I'm part of the uh, actual No, you didn't, see, you, didn't see, you, you didn't see anything. Oh, yeah, I did it again! No, oh, oh, we, we, we still didn't see anything. My incompetence. Oh, well. Oh, that's um, great. Um, A two. Uh, so, yeah. the first the first to act in this case are these two little kobolds uh, who yeah. kind of run up to you and just, for Magmarath! Uh, and one of them is going to throw a slingshot at you, uh, Chogol. <laughs> God damn it. Um, and the other one is going to kind of run up and try and stab at you, uh, try and, uh, <laughs> stab Nigel. Tink! <laughs> uh, help, helplessly, uh, as it passes now to, um, your turn, Sugar Mama. Oh... So there are two bad boys and little Villy, right? Uh, that is correct. All right. Then I'm going to do a little ice knife or a popsicle, really. Um, was that at the little guy? Uh, it's in the general vicinity of the little guy and little Villy. Um, unfortunately, that attack will um, miss uh, either one of them. They have to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay, cool. Um, there. Uh, they will succeed. Oh, is that an ice knife? Okay, yeah. I yeah. forget what your your things are called. Um, uh, the uh, little villi actually fails. Uh, however, the cobalt kind of dodges uh, agilely out of the way. Um, and so he's going to take seven cold, and the other will take uh, three cold damage uh, as you throw your ice knife uh, through the cavern. Um, that is going to be it for your turn, I think? Oh, yes. Yes, very good. Um, cool. Uh, in that case, that will bring us to... Nigel, what do you wish to do? Wait, I had a higher initiative Nigel. Uh, I think I'm the um, last PCs. I got a three. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking. I was looking at your stealth check from before. Uh, my oh. mistake. That is going to, in that case, be. Uh, that is going to be Chogol. All right. Uh, let's just crack my neck real quick. Uh, the closest kobold is the one with Nigel, correct? Yes. Hunter's mark. Oh crap! I put uh, not there. Uh, uh, Hunter's mark on it. You know what that does. And right, now we're yep. gonna go over and attack it! With I go for a morning star! Yeah! Um. That's freak. That is abs. Um. That is absolutely going to hit. I was uh, and. Uh, it is also going to kill the kobold. Uh, as you. <laughs> uh, swing the morning star up. Uh, uh, you barely even, um, you barely even kind of look at it. You're just kind of like running up, and the Morning Star just instinctively swings out to the side, brushing the cobalt to the uh, away, and just pff, slams into the wall uh, as you move uh, forward. And you can also get up to the other cobalt and the big guy. Yeah, and make another uh, Morning Star attack. Uh, I'm All right. Move my uh, Hunter's Mark. Cause that's what I do when anything drops the zero HP. Right. You going for the other cobalt? Yep. And All right, and you also and you also kill that one <laughs> as you uh, toss aside the two little guys who just ah ah, uh, and uh, they are defeated. Uh, the uh, veteran is all that remains. Uh, the defiler that is going to in that case be uh, ideal. What do you wish to do? 
Um, you know, I'm going to use my ring of elementals to summon an enthrall elemental. Oh, damn. Um, what... Can you put up the spell enthrall for me so I can interpret how this works? Uh, and can you also read the Ring of Elementals to me one more time? Because <laughs> there's so much going on here. <laughs> oh, I love this. I really love this. Um, Once per day, okay. while wearing this ring, when you cast a spell, you may choose not to have the spell's effect happen, but to accept, conjure an elemental from the spell's magic. Uh... The nature of the elementals created may vary based on the caster, location, spell, or many other reasons at our GM discretion. The elementals are chaotic and may not obey your commands. As a bonus action on your turn, you may make a spell casting ability to check to try and control the elemental. The DC equals 10 plus the spell's level of the spell that it can some it. Otherwise, the elemental acts of its own form. Okay, are you going to use a bonus action to try and command it? Uh, yeah. All right, what are you going to uh, command it to do? Uh, to try and enthrall as many of the kobolds as possible. Um, the only rem all there's only two kobolds um, that were alive, and Trogal just killed both of them. The other ones are all asleep, actually. Okay, then we'll then try and enthrall the um, the veteran. The drag the yeah the half dragon. Okay, cool. Um, so I need you to make me a check to try and uh, boss it around. Okay. Yep. It is charisma. Um, yep. So just roll a uh, just roll a d20 and add your charisma. Okay, that's definitely going to do it. Um, it shouldn't have been quite that high because it's not. Uh, I don't think you're oh, proficient yeah, in this, but, I, I uh, but it's still enough. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, and so this, uh, as you kind of uh, call on the power of your ring of creating dumb elementals, uh, <laughs> this item is so ridiculous. Uh, you watch from the ring uh, as you cast your enthrall spell. Um, the kind of uh, the words themselves uh, seem to go out and coalesce uh, into this kind of pink. Uh, this kind of like pink and blue shifting form uh, where it seems like it's actually made of the words and you can just kind of hear, um, you can just hear like some very gentle babbling coming from this thing that forms. It's kind of bulbous with two arms and very short legs as it kind of starts to uh, wander forward. It's, it's really insubstantial. Just actually you can see the words written on its body as it walks around. Uh, and it's just coming up to you just, um, it, uh, it walks up to the uh, red, uh, the red dragon veteran, and amidst the babbling, um, you can kind of hear uh, this elemental say one thing very specific to it, which is, "Hey, how you doing?" Uh, and the red dragon kind of looks down towards it and makes a wisdom saving throw, which it fits. <laughs> and the red dragon oh just goes. The red dragon just goes. I'm actually doing very well. Thank you for asking. And he kind of smiles and, and kind of leans down and like puts a hand out to like pet the elemental almost. Uh, what that is going to bring us to. Um, I believe Nigel. Uh, yeah. Nigel. Top of the initiative. Actually, it's his turn. Uh, he doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem like he gets to save at the end of his turn again, does he? I don't think so. <laughs> Um, oh dear. Uh, so yeah, he, he's. Yeah, yeah he has to roll perception to try and perceive something else. And he has um, disadvantage. On. Okay, yeah. Um, so that's what he's going to do. He's going to try. So what happens now is uh, the way the spell works is he's going to try and make a perception check to see if he noticed. Yeah, he fails. Uh, so right now the only thing that he even sees is this elemental. Uh, so he doesn't even know that you guys are there anymore. Um, <laughs> uh, what do you do? Do we just kill him? This this seems a little anticlimactic, but I, I can also get behind this. <laughs> and um, Jill pulls out his sword and starts walking over, looking for anyone to say anything. 
I just learned some Amelie. Huh? <laughs> well, you know, little Millie, it's a real shame if a parent has to bury their child, so maybe just bonk him on the head. Bonk, bonk oh, I can him. Do that. <laughs> bonk him good. All right, yeah, I'm gonna go. Bonk, uh, we're gonna go bonk him. <laughs> uh, go ahead and make an attack roll with an advantage. Where's Joe? Go ahead. Uh, I suppose I'll hit him the flat of the blade after hearing uh, Mama's please. I'm not sure if those were please, but... Uh, yeah, that hits. Besides, this is a surprisingly flat encounter. He was hoping for a duel. Oh, I get two because I'm that strong boy. That also hits. Uh, for 25. Aye, aye. Um, in that case, um, that is going to bring us to, uh, leave Mama, cause yeah. Dragon Boy already went. Yeah. Mama, what do you want to do? Is the bad boy knocked out now? No, he's just in a lot of pain. He, he's just like, kind of just like, ow, ow, but he's oh. still just very focused on the creature. You poor baby. Let me see if Mama can help. And Mama's gonna tittle over. And, uh, bonk him with a Tootsie Pop. <laughs> Alright, good job. Bonk <laughs> fast, 2018. That definitely hits. Bonk. <laughs> Another four. Ow. Uh, Joe Goff? Go to sleep. Or no, it's I- ideal for I was so so well than I yield them. Oh, yeah, everything is dragon. It doesn't matter. It, it all you all go and then he goes. So, um, yeah, yeah. Start twice. You still play the blade, and also because I've got hunter's mark, two hunter's mark. <laughs> ow, ow. ow! That's a thirteen ow. hit. Oh wait, thirteen misses. Oh, we have advantage. advantage. That's right. So twenty does hit, so it's eleven and. Uh, uh, well, you've only rolled one attack, so wow. you have to do yeah. a twenty-four hit. It's not the crit, but. Um, or I guess, yeah, it would be the crits. The advantage, one is. So. so, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Hunter's Mark crits, too. Oh, that's right. So, let me just roll another, uh, another Hunter's Mark real quick. For another five damage. All right. You, uh, you knock him out. Bonk. Uh, he just goes, ow. Uh, <laughs> uh, and kind of slumps down over to the ground as you have handily defeated the Defiler. Um, <laughs> to be safe, Nigel will steal his weapons and cut the banding of his armor. Yeah. All right. You do so. Good, smart move there. Good night, little Billy. Um, the sounds night. of furious combat continue to rage within the other room. She's just going to tuck him in and then <laughs> off to the other room. <laughs> all right. Um, so you all are just going to uh, to proceed right ahead? Yep. <laughs> Oh, All right. Yeah. Um, in, are you going to continue to Are you going to continue to try and control your uh, ring of dumb elementals? Yeah. All right. Go ahead and make me another spell casting check. All right. I would like uh, I would like everyone to make me a uh, I would like everyone to make me a wisdom safe. Oh. I'm great at these. I might be great at these. What's your What's your spell save DC? Uh, ideal. For enthrall? Yeah. It's a level two, so... Am I supposed to say... Oh, my supposed to say DC is... Yes. So it's a level two spell, so... Mizel, you, you don't say. <laughs> uh... It's 15, yeah. correct? Yep. Yeah. Um... So, Nigel and Ideal. Ideal, your own elemental looks back towards its creator, and the two of you are drawn in towards this dumb elemental, uh, where you are probably, uh, where you are probably stuck for the next minute or so until it runs out. Or are you going to try and, like, um, rush this thing into the next room? Wait, Ideal's the one that cast it, right? Yeah. That's just a question of it. For his save. Oh, he rolled, um... Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. I keep messing these things up. Why am I, I, I keep looking at the, the wrong numbers. Um, so in that case, Nigel, you are the only one who is now enthralled by this, uh, by this dumb elemental. I've seen something like this before. It's 
It's glorious. <laughs> uh, it's just there, just kind of, uh, it's just kind of there whispering sweet nothings to you. The elemental's just like, your armor is very beautiful. I love your hair. You seem very powerful. Are you powerful? You look powerful. Nice I sword. Powerful. Uh, and it's just it's just complimenting the hell out of you. Michelle, dearie, what what are you doing? When you stare into the void, the void stares back. And my <laughs> gods, the void is fine. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Uh, eventually uh the enthrall elemental dissipates uh and you are able to uh pull yourself away uh as you kind of step into the next chamber uh, as i described before there's just kind of this um you hear this kind of massive roar from um what you assume is magmaroth which is just this um this huge ancient red dragon uh, who lets out this uh, bolt blast of fire, just, I will not be defeated! Uh, and then you see um, from up above him, moving very quickly, um, uh, the fire bl blast kind of shoots out, uh, and you see something else moving high above him that jumps up, uh, dodging it. Uh, and then from the ceiling, a huge pillar of stone uh, comes down and <laughs> uh, crushes onto the uh, dragon's head, uh, which uh, knocks it down to the ground, and this figure kind of lands um, and kind of dusts himself off. Um, you see he appears to be wearing um, a pretty... Uh, he's wearing a pretty elaborate um, goat's costume as he kind of picks his head up uh, and looks to all of you, which looks torn apart and dragged across in paces, uh, burned in others. Um, you can't see his face behind the mask, but you do see kind of trickles of blood running down underneath it. Uh, and the mask is, like I said, that of um, a pitch-black-furred uh, pitch mountain goat. Um, and this uh, individual kind of looks over to the four of you uh, and doesn't say anything, and it's just looking at you from behind uh, behind his mask. After a moment of awkward silence, the rose is going to look at him and... So... Hello. He just kind of... About. He just kind of breathing very heavily. Um, you see him kind of walk over to Magmaroth. He pulls out, um, he pulls out uh, kind of a thin rapier and just <laughs> uh, runs over and stabs the dragon a few more times, just kind of ensuring that it is dead. Um, and uh, as you're looking, you can see uh, from beyond what appears to be the, um, what could only be described as the, uh, the mountain's heart. Oh, hey, that's the thing you gotta protect. The guys, we found it. Oh. Um, it is at the core of the mountain. You can see um, there's kind of a, a pillar of rock um, that leads up into um, what is this kind of um, kind of oblong. It almost it actually looks a little bit in the shape of like an almost anatomically correct heart, um, but it is all kind of cast from stone, but deep within you can see just like this slight red glow that seems to pierce through the stone uh, as the heart itself, the stone kind of uh, thrums and actually expands and contracts very much like the mountain above. Jogal is going to uh, approach it but not get too close. He doesn't know who the stranger is, but mm -hmm. he also doesn't necessarily trust a stranger. Indeed. Um, so, uh, what's up with this, Mr. Goat Man? It is the mountain's heart that you see before you. Oh, no, I the outfit. <laughs> like, looks cool. We're gonna get one of those. <laughs> you can make one, perhaps. Oh. Cool. So, uh, are you here to protect the heart, too? Yes, I'm here to protect the heart. Who are the four? Um, never mind. I know who you are. You are Bartholomew's adventurers. Yes, intrepid heroes sent out from the shop. Oh. Yeah. Very good. Uh, very good. Um, I am afraid that I will have to kill you. Why is that? You have seen something that you should not see. And 
but when I kill you, I will take the memory of this place from you. Oh, I see. It makes sense. But shouldn't we take good care of the dragon first, dearie? Taken care of, I believe. Uh, and the dragon seems to be um, completely fallen slain at this point. Well, I'm not um, just going to fly over and die. That's stupid. I'm going to cast Charm Person on this guy. <laughs> before he tries to kill um, us. All right. Um, you cast Charm Person on him. Um, you kind of send the spell out, but... <laughs> Uh, as it kind of centers on his point, um, it does not actually seem to take or have any effect. Uh, this individual appears to be immune to charm effects. Tell me, what is this forbidden thing we've seen? A strange man in goat skins? The strange heart we already knew we were coming to see? Or the dragons and kobolds? I don't know about you guys, but I think this guy's lying! Something. <laughs> he says, as I said, it is the mountain's heart. It is the life force of what you call, I believe, the uh, the sleeping mountains. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I already knew that much. Yes. You see, occasionally. If things walk a little bit too close to the outsides of your world, they forget that the world has boundaries. I protect those borders. Wait, haven't I heard about a guy like you? Kurgan seemed very upset one day. I can't remember what it was about, though. So. Um... Yes. You, have, you should not have, but, um... So, shall we do business? I can um, perhaps agree to kill you all. Um, as I said, I cannot have you know about this location, but I could kill you all willingly and it would be quick and it would be painless and you would return to your wizard. Sorry, we came here to, you know, not die, so... Well, what's we came have here to, to protect not... the heart, dearie. Yes, but the second goal is always to not die. What guarantee do we have that he's not this dragon in some guys? I or don't... some other guy who wants to steal the dragon, the, that heart thing. I suppose that's true. Sorry, dearie, but we can't take any chances. We have to protect the heart. We seem to have the same goal in opposite directions, my dear. Sheep's goat skin friend. Let's just call him goat man for now. <laughs> Yeah, it's good, man. Sounds adequate. You may call I me. I don't. Either way, I don't whatever, trust. whatever you will. Uh, and he just kind of says, he just kind of looks at you, and um, you see him kind of like pull back um, the kind of goat skin cloak that he has about him, uh, and just kind of tosses it to the side in his body. Um, his body also kind of has like a thin layer of this kind of same kind of black fur on it. Uh, but it's also, like I said, streaked with blood in places from his recent fight with this dragon. He looks incredibly weakened uh, at this point. Um, but he kind of takes a deep breath uh, and kind of draws out his weapon and just speaks to you. So I suppose there is, um, I suppose there is no more need for a conversation then, yes? Yes. <laughs> Nichelle will Maybe prepare not. his shield up. It seems not. Um, do me a favor. After I have um, finished you off, um, I suppose you won't be able to remember it anyway. But Damn. I would like you to... Uh, I'm going to leave you with a note. That's what I will do. Tell Bartholomew to stop sending adventurers into my territories. And uh, I'd like you all to roll for initiative. Not bad this time. Hey. It's still probably the worst. Oh no, not the worst. Oh hey. High five me. Um, nice. Uh, in that case, uh, Miguel, you are the first to act uh, as he kind of uh, puts aside, he kind of shakes his head a little bit uh, and kind of actually puts the um he kind of puts the rapier to the side uh and just kind of uh pulls back his arms a bit 
Nigel will charge in, and as he begins charging in, uh, you watch as he begins to get that spooky, shadowy texture coming over him, and he spreads out his skeletal wings once he gets in range, and I will do my... if I can find it. So if you could give me that sweet, sweet charisma save. Um, he absolutely can. Ah, he saves. But then, I will bonus action, spiritual weapon, and strike at him from behind. Oh, I always do that. Um, oh, boy, that fails. Um, yeah, the spiritual weapon, you kind of charge up at him, uh, this necrotic shroud, um, kind of lashing out around you, uh, empowering you, these, these huge skeletal wings, um, he kind of looks at you, um, his head just kind of turns to the side slightly, it's a little bit eerie the way he moves, because you can't actually see his eyes or where they're looking, it's just this, um, this kind of strange goat mask that looks, uh, that looks at you, um, and then the spiritual weapon kind of appears behind him, and while still kind of looking at you, you see his body just kind of move to the side, dodging out of the way, uh, agilely. Uh, is there anything else on your turn? That will do it. Um, he's actually going to, um, uh, He's actually going to run directly past you, um, uh, provoking an opportunity attack. I am all about that. Nice. Um, and he is going to charge. Uh, that definitely hits. I'll roll damage on that. I will toss a smite on that. All right. Ooh, good um, smite. Ooh, you, you, nice. Safety. Uh, you uh, kind of... Uh, pull back with your scythe and kind of spin around as he's going, uh, and the holy energy kind of comes in behind it, pouring into the wound um, as you land a pretty powerful strike. Um, but he kind of runs past you uh, and starts running towards the pack. Um, oh, yes, of course. Um, additional five, correct? so a total of 23 damage. Nice, nice opportunity attack. That's an impressive opportunity attack right there. Uh, 23 damage as he doof, 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 uh, starts running, uh, and you see him starting to build up speed very quickly, and he doof, uh, is going to try to crash into you, ideal. Uh, oh! Um, 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 I'm... I'm gonna. Are you still? Does that enough? That it. That is more than enough. I'm just wondering okay. if I can still do Polish rebuke to this or not. Um. Before I'll I give can... it to you. All right. <laughs> I don't think you can, but I'm, I'm gonna give it to you. Um, she's gonna make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, he fails uh, and takes another 14 points of fire damage. Uh, you watch as he uh, crashes into Ideal. Ideal just goes flying back as he lowers his horn, uh, his horn kind of goat uh, horns into him and just uh, slams him over. Um, and um, that is going to be the end of his turn uh, as he uses his um, uh, as he uses uh, his action to attack uh, him. That's all for the avatar this turn um that is going to i think bring us to um it was ideal you were next actually so i need you to make me a death saving saving throw or a death saving throw nice you, you have one success um in that case she'll go well i'm gonna use two bonus actions one it's an action and one it's an actual bonus action if that is okay um you actually cannot use a bonus action in place of an action. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> um, in that case, I'll just save that for the next turn. And bonus, uh, since my uh, Hunter's Mark wore off because I didn't have any Hunter uh, people left, I'm going to say this, this guy seems pretty serious about his job. Shield of Faith to get that plus two AC. And then okay. throw away my uh, shield and morning star to get out my glaive. And okay. uh, because I can't speak the, the, the words this turn, because it takes a bonus action to do that, I'm just gonna do a slingy swing on this guy. 
Alright, go ahead and make an attack roll. Um, he is, um, uh, nice, you, you power up your glaive and swing, both hit, uh, for I don't 20 power points. Yet. I can't yet. Oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry, that was the other thing, okay. Um, so, still, you take, or he takes, uh, 20 points of slashing damage, uh, as your huge glaive, uh, cuts around in a, in a wide arc, uh, striking him. Um, he doesn't, uh, his body, like, his body language from fighting someone, this person seems to have almost no reaction to the physical plane pain. Like, their body, you know, responds with kind of, like, not moving as well, you can tell, as he's taking damage. But, like, there's none of, like, the recoiling from the hit that you're used to seeing in pretty much everyone you've ever fought. Um, that is uh, the end of your turn. Yep. Um, at the end of your turn, I'd like you to make me a strength saving throw. Well, he's going to use his yeah. legendary action. Oh, nice. Um, he, uh, you feel the ground beneath you kind of uh, reach up and go to almost swallow you. Um, but you kind of, um, as it kind of starts grabbing onto your chest, you just kind of twist your uh, torso and break the rock away. Uh, and it's unable to grasp you. Uh, as it passes next to, um, as it passes next to Sugar Mama, what do you wish to do? Well, the big old dragon's dead, right? Ah, uh, the big old dragon's dead. It's just this goat man. All right. Well, I'm gonna do an old tip in here. Bring that dragon back to life. <laughs> oh my God, that's great. <laughs> All right. I feel like this shouldn't work that well, but <laughs> it does apparently. Um. All right, I'm not giving this ancient red dragon full health, but we'll bring him up. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, all right, so you use your action and you watch as Magmaroth. Uh, let's out this. Uh, let's out this kind of long, um, just kind of breath. Uh, you can smell. Um, what, it smells like a mix of, of sulfur and death that starts to spread throughout the chamber. Um, all right, it's going to roll for initiative, which I will need to grab. Hold on a second. Let's see. All right. He actually has no bonus to that. <laughs> 13. Um, cool. That brings us to the top of initiative, which is going to be um, Nijel. How far did he run away from me to get over to uh, Ideal? Um, you can get it. You can get back to him. Well, is it 30 feet or 20 feet? It's, it's 30 feet. Okay. Uh... I suppose I'll just abandon my spiritual weapon where it is for the time being, favoring, proccing, uh, let me make sure, yeah, proccing divine favor as a bonus action, and running up on him and doing that two-swing combo. Um. Um. All right, both of those are going to hit for another... Um, two, 30 points of damage uh, plus in there, 33 points of damage nice round <laughs> and uh, you smite on both of them 33 40 50 points of damage oof oof uh, your scythe uh, kind of whips around cutting into him in two different places um, is there uh, anything else on your turn? That is all I got. Like I said, he does not react to pain, but you can definitely see, like, the huge gashes that you're leaving on his body. Um, in that case, I believe it is his turn. Um, uh, actually, at the end of your turn, he's going to use another um, legendary action on the... Uh, on the... 
Actually, he's going to use it on you, Sugar Mama. Oh. I need you maybe a strength saving throw. All right. Well, I'm going to take a 16 in it. Uh, you do barely succeed. Nice. Um, all right. Uh, and then it is going to be his turn, um, where he is going to... Um, he is going to look around... Um, he's going to look around and... What's he going to do? Um, uh, he's going to go after you. Uh, he's just going to go after you still, Sugar Mama, because you're still up in that zone. If you're running towards? Um, nope. Let's go. That's oh, not doing? going to succeed. Do I get Yes, it does. No, you're all in the you're all in the same zone. Okay. Yeah, you're all next to each other. You're just in a pile with everyone right now. Um and that is going to be it for his turn. That's all I can do. Uh that's going to bring us to Our Ideal. I need you to make another death save. You have two successes. Nice. Um, that's going to bring us to Trugal. Actually, no, that's going to bring us to our friend the dragon, um, who has not received orders as of yet. I mean, is that a free action or is that an action? Um, we'll call it a bonus action. All right. Then Sugar Mama on her turn would have said, oh, attack the mean old one with the with the goat face. All right, I'll give it to you. Uh, and the ancient dragon will go up to him and use his... Um... All right, uh, I would like everyone to... Um... Nah, he'll he'll do this, actually. He is going to use his multi-attack. Um... Uh, he misses one attack, but the other two absolutely hit for absolutely massive damage. Uh, as he deals... Uh, very good. Um, as he deals a ton of damage. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, and then... Uh, that many damage. Uh, as he... Uh, uh, as he... Uh, rakes, uh, rakes across with his claws and then leaves a, a massive bite, the kind of, like, fire and death still in the thing's lungs, kind of burning the creature. Uh, and you hear... Uh, you hear the avatar at this point just kind of call out, just... Uh, just getting, uh, frustrated a bit uh, as it passes uh, at the end of that turn I need you to make another strength saving throw uh, sugar mama alrighty um, from beneath you the earth <laughs> uh, picks up and wraps around you <laughs> restraining you and holding you in place oh, um, as he uses another legendary action uh, and uh, Chogol oh thank you Jeremy I needed that guy um Chogol already... You already went. No, no, you haven't go yet. No, yeah, go. Oh, right, in that case... Um, as much as I love to help the doc, he seems fine. He seems fine. Don't worry about it. Oh, uh, I'm gonna speak loud. <laughs> All right, you speak your command word. The glaive uh, blazes up with radiant light. Wow! <laughs> uh, a 14 and 10 actually both miss, unfortunately. Uh, as your blade <laughs> uh, swings about. Um, um, to no effect. At the end of your turn, um, Sugar Mama, uh, he's going to use two legendary actions to crush you. <laughs> you feel the rock um, tighten around you. Uh, oh no. You take 30 points of bludgeoning damage. Well, this mama's down. Um, 
All right. Uh, that is going to bring us to. Um, that is going to bring us to the top of the initiative. Uh, or actually, no, it's Mom, I need you to make a death saving throw. All righty. Don't worry. I'll be um, you've... fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, Mama just kind of is like in a daze just you hear her say that she'll be fine which probably breaks all of your hearts a little bit uh, as it passes to uh, the topic of the initiative which is Nigel. What do you want to do? Nigel will do that good old swing and he will bonus action scoot his sacred weapon closer but it's still only 20 feet closer so not close enough. Uh, I can't use my channel divinity to undo that, can I? Uh, um, one's one, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, yeah, I will swing wildly and then... Hey, you up. can hit with that one, though. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's get some of that going. This boy is not doubled. This boy is doubled. And let's dump that big smite in him, which is doubled. Oh my god. Um, 21, 24, 28. <laughs> oh god. Uh, 45. Another strong round on one hit. Uh, as you uh, smite this dude, he's starting to look pretty beat up. Um, that's going to bring us to. Um, that's going to bring us to Goat Boy, um, who Chogal and um, Nigel, you are still. Um, you are still kind of right in front of him, uh, and he's going to, um, what's he going to do? Uh, yeah, he's just going to come after you with his attack again. Who's that one uh, that's, uh, that's against Chogel. That misses. All right, then that's all he has. Uh, that's going to, in that case, be, um, actually, you know what? No, he's going to... Uh, as a gambit, take a step away from both of you, provoking an opportunity attack. Which, of course, I'm going to take. Yes. And 17 uh, hit? 17 does hit. Good, good stack of smite on that. Level 2 yep. smite. Uh, t t a 10 misses. I am going to do that boy to 20 hit. 20 does hit? Um, can you just tell me how much damage happened? There's too many things for me to look at. Uh, okay, uh, let me see. Uh, let me just have a calculator right here. Nigel 19. Oh, that's my music. Oh, strange. Uh, Nigel and 19. For, uh, oh my god, you monsters. Uh, another 50 points of damage. <laughs> Uh, his body is, is kind of like barely moving at this point as he um, takes the steps away from you uh, and runs. Um, he seems to be a little bit faster than you guys. Actually, he uh, takes off and just kind of starts opportunity attack. Starts running away. Oh, yep, yeah, he gets an opportunity oh, yeah. attack too. <laughs> he's gonna use. He's gonna use his bite. Uh, oh my lord! A nineteen does hit for another. Uh, another 28. Uh, still not quite enough. Uh, as he uh, continues running away, Jesus Christ, uh, and is going to end his turn um, yonder. Uh, as it is now Chogal, it's your turn. Oh, oh, did, uh, does my deal have to go? No, no, um, you're throw. right. Yep, death saving throw. Just as a reminder. No, you're back up. Cool. Um, cool. Uh, ideal, you are crushing it on these death saves. Um, you are now, uh, you are now alive. <laughs> ish. Ish. Alive ish. Love enough. Um, is it... All right. Now I believe it yeah, is. Uh, and actually, any... he's going. To, he's going to take a legendary action, and uh, the ancient dragon is going to make a. Uh, is going to make a save. Come on, Ancient Dragon. Uh, 
Ancient Dragon's probably going to succeed this save. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, uh, and Ancient Dragon is going to go up, and uh, he's going to use his... Um, he's going to use his... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, he's gonna. He's just gonna run over and uh, wreck this dude's uh, wreck this dude's face. Uh, oh wait, wrong. The last one didn't happen. The the third one didn't happen. Tail. Okay. Uh, but um, wow. And uh, you watch as he reaches over and eats the guy. <laughs> he's watched over and eats him. <laughs> Uh, as the red dragon leans down and, just, and just kind of falls him back into his throat, uh, and then just kind of belches a bit of fire, uh, and uh, you got him. Can we go over to Mama real quick for ten points of little hands? Nigel right. will pick up Ideal with five points of healing hands. Oh, I, I, I was everyone doing? I told you it'd be fine. Mama's fine. The dragon ate the bad guy. Oh, that's good. You know, we have a rare opportunity. We should really just soak in every little detail we can see here. Oh, all right. What's, what's there to see? The boy, Ed Kogo, is just going to soak in every ounce of the cave. <laughs> all right. Uh, make investigation checks, anyone who's interested in doing that. Sure. Nigel is going to boop the heart. Oh, with my God. Feet. Sure. Um, you're going to oh, boop wow. the heart, Nigel? Oh. Yeah, just a little touch. I'm not going to do anything creepy to it other than just a little boop. Okay. Um, you and Sugar Mama are over standing pretty near to the heart. Um, there's kind of actually a small kind of some circular steps. Um, you get up into the... Um, you get up into the heart, and as you do so... Um, you come close, you boop it with the spear. Sugar Mama, you also, um, you're kind of looking around and, and you see kind of like a point, you yell, the, the spear just kind of boops off of it, but Sugar Mama, you see kind of a point on it um, that seems a little bit different. It almost seems, um, it almost seems like a button which you place your hand on. Uh, and as you do so, you kind of, kind of push it in uh, and for just, uh, I'd actually, for one thing, I'd like you to make me a, a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Cool. It's gonna be a tough one. Okay. Um, for a brief moment, um, you kind of your eyes are no longer out of your head, uh, and you feel um, you feel powerful. You can feel all of the mountain around you. You can see everything. Uh, and as you're kind of moving around, you, you understand all of these interconnected tunnels and, and all of these kind of strange things. This water, it flows like blood. Uh, the tunnels move around like veins and arteries. Um, the body of the creature kind of heaves up and down. That, that heaving is breath. You are in the heart of some kind of massive earth titan that spans miles and miles. Uh, and then, in a brief moment, after you kind of have this this moment of insight, um, that feeling, that that burst of power, it is too much to handle. It is too much to take in at once, and you collapse over, unconscious. Oh. Nigel will boop her for one point of lay on hands. Um, you do so. It does not seem to bring Sugar Mama up. Um, she's still just kind of, she's just kind of not there right now. Okay, All right. Uh, Nigel is going to try booping the heart again since clearly he missed something. Um, we're making an investigation check as well. I, I, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> oh, actually, you've already kind of made it. Yeah, you, you kind of boop it. Um, you're looking around. You don't quite. You're not sure what happened to Sugar Mama. I'll shrug it uh, off. I then. think it would be best to bring uh, Bartholomew here to see what he wants to do. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. All I know is that this place is great through my next book. And eventually, it's possible he may want to do something with the heart. Um. 
Luckily, we Shooter took Mama, it back to it and then... Shooter Mama, you are... Um, yes? You are out for, like, a whole couple of days. Uh, but eventually you kind of make it back, and eventually all of you kind of work your way back to Bartholomew's shop, where Bartholomew says, Ah, um, you're welcome back, everyone. Oh. Um, where am I? Hey, you're, in my, you're in my shop. Um, where, what happened? It, you touched all... the fire, and then you fainted. No. It's all a little fuzzy, but it, it, it seemed like we were inside some sort of massive beastie. Is it much? Well, whatever the case, I believe the heart may be too dangerous to leave where it is, but I will leave that up to Bartholomew. Oh, you know, you must just do it. Uh, see, Reveal, you kind of tell him of your experience, and, um... Yes. <clears throat> the heart. It is, um... It is not my domain. Um, I think it is best left untouched. It is old. Uh, perhaps uh, I will go and look into seeking out, however, who found that, that dragon found that location in the first place and see that um, that no one else repeats it. But I think the tampering with that could be even more deadly. Um, uh, who uh, didn't want us there, though? Did you catch his name? Uh, he wore some sort of weird goat skin. Also, whenever you hit him, he doesn't really move much. It's like a, an element or something. Oh, sugar mama. Is he not still in the belly of your dragon? Uh, well, the dragon sort of falls apart after an hour or so. And it was dead to begin with, to be fair. Um, Said something about not stepping into its boundary or something. Yes, it seemed a little protective of the place. It was threatening to... Wipe our memories and told us to tell you not to send adventurers there. Um, I will have to uh, ruminate upon these things. Um, but uh, when adventure calls, you still all have to uh, go out there, regardless of uh, what anyone else says. Um, uh, we I have drops. I didn't get hurt, so I'm fine with going out again. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, right. um, well, um, well, either sure. way, I'm sure you could think of something there to protect the heart yes. from disturbing the. Um, whatever it is connected to. Um, uh, I will have to, uh, as I said, uh, ruminate upon some of these things, um, as uh, you may want to as well. These are strange happenings. Um, either way, uh, I believe I owe you all a good deal of money. And he hands each of you 200 Bartholomew books. Uh, and you all gain an experience point and you've completed this adventure. Nice ancient dragon, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> well, Blue Whisper, whisper pl please, please nerf. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, Jeremy, I'm not the one who put an ancient red dragon in the room that happened to be dead. That is true. 